What's up guys, Penguin Overlord here, and welcome back to another Ghost Recon uh, news update. So, during Ubisoft Forward today, we got a lot of information about the upcoming Episode 3 update. So, there's a lot to go, go into between uh, the main update here with Episode 3, Red Patriot, changes to the Gunsmith, and a new class. So, let's just get started. So, we're going to get contacted by Scott Mitchell, the longtime leader and commanding officer of the Ghosts. Somehow, even though Operation Citadel has shut down communications, I guess somehow he managed a way to get, find a way to get through the uh, communications block. Oh, and this is all coming on September 15th, in case you didn't know. Uh, so basically, what hap what's going on is Trey Stone has been working with the Russian separatists Raven's Rock, who were the main villains of Ghost Recon Future Soldier, if you were not familiar. Um, so that explains how they're on the island. And they are led by Major, and I'm going to butcher this because I'm really bad at pronouncing uh, names from other languages like Russian. Uh, Pyotr uh, Bukharov. I hope I got that right. But that's not all. The Bodarks are back, and they are planning terror attacks on... A terror attacks. It's kind of bad grammar. Whatever. Uh, terrorist attacks on U.S. soil with the use of nerve gas. So that explains the nerve gas in the uh, trailer kind of obvious but their plan is to use scales drone technology to dispatch the nerve gas quickly and efficient efficiently explaining again why they are on the island so there is an actual reason although i think some of the earlier trailers for ghost recon breakpoint did imply that drone technology was more widespread i don't know maybe the canon changed between that where maybe the drones were still being developed i don't know whatever not important uh, but basically, the idea is they're going to nerve gas America quickly with drones, which is not good. <laughs> not good at all. So we got to kill them all. Go figure. Uh, el eliminate all men implicated in Stone's plan and take down Raven's Rock Top Bodark agents. And you'll experience new activities, new earn new rewards as usual. So, uh, like I said in the last video, actually, no. I don't think that information was out yet. But two of the missions will be free for all players to enjoy. But players who have the Red Patriot Adventure Year One Pass will have immediate access to explore the remaining content as it unfolds. So yeah, Year One Pass content. But you could play two of the missions now instead of one, like in uh, Deep State. So that's cool. Uh, so we've got 10 story missions and 26 high-quality adventure rewards to earn along the way. We've got a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons and cosmetics coming this update, and I don't think that's even all of them, because it didn't mention any cosmetics coming in from Maria's shop, and we usually get a couple. So, enjoy a compelling story featuring old friends and enemies from the Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon universe. Uh, the road to the final mission is up to you. That's an interesting phrase. Uh, so basically, we're going to get a bunch of awards. Go figure. Costumes. That, there is a couple things I want to note here. Uh, Pyotr Bukharov costume. The Scott Mitchell costume and top, as we can see here. So we're going to get a shirt as well. No idea who Claro Gentile is. I guess that's going to be a character in the DLC. But the interesting thing here is the Trey Stone costume. So we're going to be getting, a, getting a, that in this uh, DLC. So... Fingers crossed, we get to kill this son of a bitch sometime. That would be that would be really nice because, like I said in the last video, I really want to have some progression with the main story. If we can uh, kill Trey Stone in this um, DLC, that would be awesome. Uh, next up, so we're gonna get a bunch of Bodark gear from all the uh, missions, I presume. So you can read all that. It, um, Basically, a bunch of Bodark gear, so you can dress up as Bodark. Uh, there was some comments about on the uh, Reddit about how there was no future soldier gear. I wouldn't completely write it off yet, because, again, we usually get some gear in Maria's shop uh, with all these different updates. So it's possible we still may get some future soldier stuff. Wouldn't lose hope out there um, just yet. Um, but, you know, it doesn't say in this uh, in this news or anywhere else, whether we'll get future soldier gear. So, don't give up hope yet. But we might, we might get, it, we might not. So, weapons. Uh, these are some weapon variants. So, the five five three scout. This is the uh, Sentinel version. Uh, the Sentinel AK seventy four assault. And one of the weapons, new weapons we're getting is the Honey Badger. So, we're, there's going to be a survival variant and a brown variant. 
uh, which is pretty cool. So Honey Badger was one of the weapon, one of the DLC weapons that came out in Ghost Recon Wildlands, and that's making a return, which is pretty awesome. A lot of people have been requesting that, so that's good. Along with a few other weapons, which we'll get to when we get to changes to the gunsmith. Uh, so we're going to get some Raven's Rock specific vehicles, uh, the Opethus, the MC1 Restraint, the Boson, I think, okay, that's an electric car, I think, and Radiation, no idea what that is, but whatever. So, the Fireworks and In Deep Waters Mission Rewards, which include the Claro, claro Gentil Costume and Mask, Bodarchy mask, Bodark gloves, Bodark blah blah blah, honey badger weapon, and brown weapon are obtainable by all players whether they own the year one pass or not, which is another good thing. So definitely free gear for everyone who doesn't have uh, the DLC. Uh, you can, um, in, as usual with the same thing with the uh, Deep State DLC, you can invite up to three friends to play the missions with them. Uh, rewards can be granted retroactively to those players who complete the missions by picking up either the Red Patriot Adventure or you won't pass the store themselves. So you won't get the rewards if you don't have the DLC and you play with friends, but if you do get the, the DLC or you won't pass later, you'll get them retroactively. New class, Pathfinder. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, so let's just skip over this. We're going to get new PvP content as well for the people who play PvP. The new map, Riverbank. Uh, new two mission milestones, which are related to the uh, Panth Pathfinder class, which is pretty cool. And new Pathfinder class adaptation. Not really sure what that means, but whatever. Uh, let's go into changes to Gunsmith. Uh, because we got quite a few um, things here. So we got um, custom stocks here. Uh, that was one of the big things that um, people, I guess, noticed and they were talking and uh people noticed in the game and people were talking about so basically with these different weapons here you're going to get all sorts of different stocks uh if you know all of these offhand um that's great um my hat's off to you even though i'm not wearing a hat right now because <laughs> uh, i don't even know all these so that's cool i'll definitely play with that a little bit more uh, so yeah, you got got stocks for the M41, 416, 516, 553, Scorpion Evo 3 CQC, Scorpion Evo 3 Tactical, UMP CQC. I think that's supposed to be the um, I think that's supposed to be the Echelon 9 SMG. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. And the MPX Tactical. Uh, these custom stocks will also have the same compatibility across the different weapon variations that are listed above. So I guess. If, if you have, like, the 416 Assault, you can customize the stock on that as well. Uh, yeah, shared stock among weapon variations. You can use stocks from different variations of the same weapon base. The Mark 17 stock will be available in the Mark 17 Shorty and Mark 17 Assault and vice versa. Uh, yeah, basically sharing stocks across weapon variants, which is cool. If you want that extra customization to your weapon, which is which will be pretty neat. You also have shared stocks across different weapon types. Uh, like, for example, the AK-47 stock will be compatible with the Russian 12 shotgun and the Sega 12 and vice versa. So, again, AK platform uh, weapons, whether they are shotguns or rifles, will have, will be, you'll be able to share stocks. Uh, yeah. Underbarrel grenade launchers. Um, more grenade launchers are coming to different weapons. Notably, the... The uh, GP25 grenade launcher, uh, the uh, grenade launcher for the AK platform is coming back uh, in this game, which is pretty cool. It was in Wildlands, and it's kind of a surprise that it wasn't back in the game. Uh, basically, when the game uh, Breakpoint launched, it was like only one grenade launcher, it's the M203. Uh, and GL1, which is um, this grenade launcher right here, is going to be compatible with... I think it's already compatible with the Tavor and Tavor Assault. I think that change already happened, but also it's going to be on the AUG and AUG Assault and the VHS, VHS D2. The uh, one, I think that's a Czech rifle, whatever. Underbarrel options. This is a big thing a lot of people have been asking for. The universal underbarrel system. This will basically allow all four grips to be compatible with all assault rifles, submachine guns, and shotguns, which is a good thing. The only limitation is the rail size capacity, which makes sense. And it will be available on most special weapons and weapon skins, which again is another good thing. 
definitely a step forward towards the Wildland system. I'm not really sure why this was, um, why such an arbitrary uh, limitation existed in the first place uh, when the game came out, except I guess time crunched and it couldn't do it in time because it had like, the game had like what two years of development time, so not a ton of time. Uh, that's and that's assuming uh, it started right when uh, Wildlands came out uh, when they started developing the game. Um, so yeah, good thing. Uh, definitely going to be able to play with more attachments more and see which is best for certain weapons. So that'll be a good thing. Bipods, another thing people would ask for. Um, uh, they've made c improvements to Gunsmith, but functioning bipods will not be added to the game. So what that means is that, um, I guess for like example in Future Soldier, if you deployed your bipod, you would have very minimal recoil, and uh, your yeah, you would have very minimal recoil, and you your weapon would be more stable, wouldn't be moving around a bunch when you were scoped in. Um, that's not happening, which is disappointing. I guess it's an engine thing, and they've got a million other things that they need to get done, like bug fixes, which I don't think I even have. Oh, no, there's some bug fixes in this article, but there, there's a bunch of bu bug fixes coming in this uh, update. Uh, however, with title update uh, 3.0.0, we added bipods and range finders on the tactical variations of the M4A1, MPX, and the Scorpion Evo 3. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. They added a bipod to a submachine gun. <laughs> That's hilarious. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 can you just imagine just sticking an extended mag and having a bipod on a submachine gun? Just... <laughs> You have a micro LMG. <laughs> that, that's crazy. Uh, let's keep going because we're at 12 minute mark. Additionally, bipod compatibility for the 762 caliber weapon, so like the 805 Bren, Mark 17, and the ARX 200, which is a good thing. Uh, the ARX 200 is actually getting quite a bit of love. Actually, the 762 rifles, our assault rifles, going to get some love in this update, which is cool. Uh, new barrels. Um, they added more barrels, so there's a medium. Barrel now available for the MP5 and MP5 division. Why you would use that, I don't know. But more importantly, the short barrels are <clears throat> excuse me, the short barrels are now available for the ARX 200, the Paladin 9 sniper rifle, which I don't know why you put a short barrel in the sniper rifle, but whatever, and the uh, Russian 12 gauge shotgun, which is a good thing because that thing needed a short barrel um, for both the regular thing and the assault variants. Um, and I think that's it. It's kind of short as to new barrels. It could have done a little bit more, I think. But uh, we have new and variant weapons. So with the Red Patriot Venture, as we've talked about, we're getting the 553 Scout. So that's a picture here. Uh, the AK-74 Assault, that's what it looks like. It's all green and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like all green stuff. That's, that's not a, like a regular camo. Uh, the Honey Badger Brown, which is one of the uh, quest rewards. That one looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to doing that. And this is a free mission reward. Actually, I think these are all... Oh, no, okay, no. The free mission reward is for all people. And this this is for, like, later um, later stuff. Actually, one of the things that I hope they did and just didn't mention is that I hope they added the bipod back to the 553 Scout because they took it out in a, in a previous update. And I don't really know why. Didn't really make much sense. Anyway... Uh, more weapons coming, so, uh, Maria Shop Skull Credits. Now, these two weapons, okay, I think the, I think the UP, UMP CQC is definitely the, uh, Echelon 9 SMG. I think that's what they mean, and they just didn't update that. Uh, and the Paladin 9 Sniper Rifle. So, if you missed out on the Resistance live event, you will still be able to get those weapons. Um, so, yeah, that's good. M4A1 CQC, that is coming. Um, I talked about this in a previous video. Uh, I think about new weapons coming in to the game. So the M4A1 CQC is finally coming, which is going to be pretty cool. I wonder if it's going to be a Mark 18. We'll see. We'll see how, what it looks like. But I'm looking forward to actually testing out all these new weapons, which also include the ACS-12 which is awesome. That was another weapon that came out in Wildlands as a DLC weapon, which I loved in that game. It was one of my favorite shot. Actually, no, I think it was my favorite shotgun. And it's going to be even better in Breakpoint because you're going to be able to carry more ammo. So 
definitely looking forward to playing with that. Uh, of course, we've got a regular version of the Honey Badger that you'll be able to customize the camo on, and the FAL. Hopefully, the FAL in this game will be better than the one in Wildlands, because the one in Wildlands was just messed up. Like, the, the grips... Like, you, if you use the vertical grip, it made the recoil worse, which was atypical of how assault rifle... Which was atypical of how um, grips work on assault rifles in that game. So it, the FAL was messed up. Hopefully it'll be better in this game. Pathfinder class rank reward. The M4A1 scout. So we are getting a scout variant of the M4A1. Wonder if that's going to be the uh, Mark 12 weapon. If you're not familiar. If you're familiar with that. Actually let me look it up. Uh, Mark 12. Yeah. The special purpose rifle. I wonder if it's going to be like this. Let me pop it up that would be cool that would be cool because this is a fairly uh interesting weapon that a lot of people wanted to see in the game so let's go back uh tactical cache we're going to talk about that in the pathfinder class uh, breakdown uh in a few moments and uh, then the in-game store with the ghost coin so this is stuff you're gonna have to pay um money for uh you've got all these different variants you've got the new custom prefix which is interesting i i'm going to take a look at that when it comes out um we'll see we'll see how that um goes because i'm curious about how that looks what that looks like um and of course you got the acs 12 custom which is pretty cool and the m41 scout custom uh and yeah you can read all this uh there's some bug there's some improvements. The uh, Russian 12-gauge shotgun is getting a suppressor, which is awesome. Um, actually, I don't think any of the shotguns in this game have a suppressor currently. I know they did in Wildlands, but not in this game. So, uh, Gunsmith Explode animations updated on various weapons. Cool, I guess. Quality update to all stock te textures and various optimizations. Okay, whatever. Okay, bug fixes. This was a big one. They fixed the uh, M4A1 Valor. Uh, the assault variant of the M4A1 that you got by pre-ordering the game, they fixed an issue where, <laughs> this is hilarious, like the front sight was sticking out of the rail. It, w it was bad. So, well, I mean, it is bad. It's, the glitch is still currently in the game. So they're going to fix that. They're going to fix a few other things, whatever. Uh, you can read that all that here. And, of course, I'll have links in the description to all of the uh articles so the pathfinder class finally uh let's try to wrap this up quickly um so the path this is the new class that we're going to be getting which is pretty cool and it's also we're also going to get tactical caches caches whatever how you pronounce that uh to the game which will be pretty interesting so they are scattered everywhere in the wild by the outcasts to provide tactical equipment these class Caches also integrate with the Pathfinder class, offering special items that are used to refill the class's special ability, as the Pathfinder can identify and locate them easier than the other classes in-game. Uh, make sure to look for these well-hidden caches that access high-quality and exclusive items, including, so this isn't everything, if I'm reading this correctly, it's not everything, but we are getting the AUG Scout, which looks a little goofy. Is that like a custom bipod or is that just a regular bipod and just looks weird because it's on a uh, thing? Whatever. Uh, but we're getting the AUG Scout. We're getting the Mark 17 Scout, which if I look, if that looks, if I'm looking at this correctly, that actually looks like the uh, the Mark 20 by uh, FN, which is a, uh, I guess, sort of a DMR version of the uh, Mark 17. Actually, let me look it up. Mark 20 FN. Uh, yeah, the Mark 10 SSR. Yeah, this is it. Uh, can we... No, I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, let me compare... Yep, that's it, pretty much. Uh, you can't really tell the stock right back here. But yeah, that looks like the same weapon, so that's cool. Uh, you can get Tree Leaves Gilly Top and Tree Leaves Gilly Pants. And, uh, this is just a sample. This is probably, like, the best stuff that you can get. Um, there's probably some other stuff that you can get. I don't know if we'll get more weapons. Uh, we'll see. But moving on to the Pathfinder class. It is a versatile scout. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Filler here. So let's talk about its special ability. So you can call a rogue Asriel drone at a high altitude. And you saw this in the, uh, main trailer. Where you can scan enemies, which will detect them and mark them for allies. 
You can lure enemies away to control a stealth approach, which is pretty cool. You can flash or stun enemies, or you can deploy a tactical strike. And we did see one of those in the uh, trailer, where basically all of the drones were shut down. So if you hate drones, you've got another tool to get rid of them, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool. And it has a black and white thermal vision. Uh, do I have... Did y'all? Yeah, it's right here. So this is again. You saw this in the trailer, but uh, that's pretty cool. A lot of people have been asking for black and white thermals. It is restricted to this class, though. Um, so that may be a little bit disappointing for some, but it's in the game now. Um, Uplink protocol. This is a special tool that refills the Pathfinder skill gauge. Now the interesting thing is, it's found only in tactical caches. I assume that means that. Um, it won't be refilled when you go to your bivouac or when you reload your game. You have to actually go to the cache to, uh, the cache, whatever, to actually restore it, which will be pretty interesting. We'll see, we'll see if that's the case. Um, I'll definitely do a lot of playing around with this class when the uh, update comes out. You also have passive skills, which, um, you can locate the tactical caches easily with visual and audio feedback. You also have scout vision, so your, I think ha if I understand this correctly, your thermal vision instead of like the blue and yellow sort of normal default thermal vision, it's going to change to black and white, which will be pretty cool. And that can also highlight tactical caches, so it'll make them easier to find. You also have the wild metabolism. Uh, skill so your ration effects are buffed and last longer for the two people here <laughs> that like actually use the rations I, I i mean i have used them a little bit but i don't know but th this will be this will give them an additional buff so you've got 50 percent at pathfinder rank one and then when you once you reach rank two it's going to be at 100 percent duration uh and, uh, and buffed, so it's going to do more. So it would be more useful if you like using the uh, rations in the game. So that will be pretty cool. As well, in the Ghost War, um, they made a few balancing adjustments. Uh, Uplink protocol and adrenal shots will fill the gauge by 25%, while sacrifice perk fills 13 Adjusted duration. In PvE, the drones will always see the enemies. This will be disabled while in PvP. So I guess you always have to use the uh, marker thing. The lore creates sound markers. The scout vision will be disabled, so the white hot thermals, you're not going to have that in PvP. And tactical caches are not present in PvP. Uplink protocol will be located on the map like any other class item. So, this may not be the go-to class for, um, for PvP. Uh, of course, the Pathfinder class will be free for all users, but the Year 1 Pass owners will get an instant unlock of the class at launch. No skill points needed, as well as one week early access. So, you can definitely count on me doing a class review of the um, of the Pathfinder class as soon as reasonably possible. I, it will probably happen, I think, the 17th. It depends on how much uh, testing I can do of the new class. Probably the 17th or the 18th. That's when... I plan on getting that video out. I do want to get it out as soon as possible, though. Uh, so, yeah, that's the Pathfinder class. The one thing that I am curious about is whether uh, the uplink protocol is the only way you can refill the Pathfinder skill gauge. If there's any other ways you can do it. Um, that would be um, something interesting to uh, investigate, to find out. I, I hope there's other ways you can... Uh, um, refill the skill gauge even if it takes a little bit longer because it the utility may be uh it, the utility may not may not be as good um if uh you just have to get that one uh class item in order to refill it we'll see uh i'm definitely looking forward to playing with this this is going to be a fun one uh to mess around with so definitely look forward to that but it is 24 minutes into the video, and I have rambled on long enough. So thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think about all the coming updates. And of course, this isn't even the patch notes yet, so who knows what other stuff we're getting. I know we're getting major bug fixes. I hope they fix that one issue with the uh, behemoth drones where they uh, don't respawn, because I'm going to need to farm some scale credits to be able to pick up all these different uh, new weapons and 
whatever stuff gets added to Rhea's shop. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to do after I uh, upload this video, go on to Breakpoint and, uh, and try to get some skull credits together so I can afford everything. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. Thank you all for watching. I'm Penguin Overlord. Now I'll catch you all next time. Take care, guys.